welcome to the MBS Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. The end is come for Yakakistan, and I feel fine. Yay, your wish has come true. Except for, you know, the little ones. I don't want the little ones to die. Why would you think that of me? You're sick. You're sick. Can't be helped. Can't be helped. But anywho, in today's review, we are going to review the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic comic, issue 55 and 56, Wings Over Yak Yakistan. So, in this uh, story, Yak Yakistan comes under sudden attack by the dragons. Ooh, what happened? And also, this comic review is brought to you by Patreon supporter named Dragatorius. Thank you for the support, my friend. So, anywho, before we dive deep into the comics, uh, we are going to tackle this a bit differently because this is a two-parter and I think issue 55 and 54 tells a different type of story. So we're going to go for the whole teaming for this time around. And before we head off, you guys should take a read because it's a pretty interesting story to read. And welcome back. So anyway, Silver, your first impressions of this comic? Sigh. Ooh, that bad, eh? Well, it's a, it's an odd thing. Like you say, it's really two different stories. The first part is focused on Rainbow Dash and the Wonderbolts. The second being more Spike and his struggles to end this conflict. However, everyone seems to take it on the chin in this, except for Spike, as he finally gets some respect, but even he gets dumped on by his so-called friends for a good chunk of it. So you just feel like, oh, there ain't no justice in this. Spitfire is shown to be less adventurous than in other stories. And the ponies in the second part, oh my goodness. It's not that they're out of character. They've had their own biases in the past, and they don't always work well with other races. But it's the obliviousness that they show I wouldn't recommend this comic as a first read for people getting into Pony, because it only shows the characters at their worst. Uh, this is something you do after you have a little more fondness for the characters, but even then, because of that fondness, you're just like, ah, this really is not fun to read. I, I can see that, I can see that. And the thing about this comic here is that it's a strange one. Like, uh, how do I put this? It's trying to tell a really interesting story, but they kind of intertwine a lot of things together to make the story work. And I think somehow Hasbro is involved with this one. It's kind of the whole crossover thing that they're doing. Because uh, you haven't mentioned this before, but uh, Rainbow Dash's parents are in this one. And also the whole... Um, what was the second one? Uh, Dragon, Ember thing. So I'm sensing that they squish two things together into one comic to make things work in terms of how the whole scenario plays over this one. Because um, this one comes right around where Rainbow Dash's parents exist. And in between that, there's also the whole Pinkie Pie going to Yakistan. And also, this was before... Ember goes to Ponyville kind of thing. So it's kind of a whole amalgam of trying to make things kind of intertwine and relate. And to me, that kind of doesn't work for this comic here. I think they missed the mark on that one. They missed the cutie mark? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anywho, let's head into the review. So uh, let's try this, Silver. Um, let's go for characters. So who you want to talk about first well we're going to discuss the cardinal sin that this comic has done maybe like prince rutherford what are you doing what were you thinking mm, prince rutherford here is well i know how you dislike prince rutherford but him here is underutilized i i believe that he here doesn't really do that much because it doesn't show him in the best light where, okay, spoilers have been worn, we're going to talk about the whole thing, and we're going to talk about the conclusion and ending here. So, the only reason why the dragons are attacking because he gave the honorary yak status to Pinkie Pie as a sign of friendship or something like that. While that status was given to one of the elder dragons, 
way back when, when the dragons and Yak were looking for peace. And it seems that with Rutherford giving the title to Pinky, it seems that, yeah, you started something bad, and that's not good. And at the same time, when the dragons start invading, Rutherford is thinks of the safety of his people and Pinkie Pie first and foremost. That's a far cry different from the from his depiction in the show where he's willing to let the entire yak race starve and freeze to satisfy his own pride. I'd argue that his presentation in this comic is actually better, though he is not the brightest of bulbs. He does look a lot better than the other characters. True that, and I think that could have been after the episode with Pinkie Pie. Like, he's learned to look at the bigger picture and stuff. And honestly, looking at Rutherford here, he does take care of his people even better than what is shown in the episode, which is a good one. So, yeah, that's why I say this commits the cardinal sin of making me actually kind of like Rutherford. It's like, <laughs> no, there's an order to things. There's an order. Don't mess with the order. For my order, I'll have a cheeseburger. Oh, okay. I'll I'll have a lush fries. But anywho. There we go. <laughs> but anywho. Um, yeah, I do agree with you on that one. Okay, what about the Wonder Bolts, specifically Spitfire here? To me, I think that she's being undermined by Rainbow Dash wholeheartedly. And the thing is, okay, Spitfire here is the captain, but suddenly Rainbow Dash is taking, um, whatchamacallit, uh, taking charge, and that's not a good thing. And the portrayal with Spitfire here is kind of, oh, we're not really military. We're kind of show flyers. Like, we don't know how to fight. Like, oh, the Wonderbolts are just flyers. We're stunt flyers. We're nothing special. Which is kind of funny given that Guardians of Harmony, which I admit not not really canon, not part of this storyline, but it depicted Spitfire as this somewhat daredevil, reckless, but responsible, but also reckless at the same time. She loved the idea of going headfirst into danger. I think the most important fact here is that the Wonderbolts are kind of the equestrian air force kind of deal. They are there to be the air defense for Equestria. And from this comic here and what Spitfire is saying that, nah, we're just flyers, we're stunt flyers, we're nothing, we're, we're not military, we shouldn't be doing this. Even though they tackled a dragon in uh, Secret of My Excess. True that. And though they didn't have the best showing, they did give it, a, they did give Adult Spike a run for his money. True that, true that. I would have ex- uh, accepted the line if that, oh, this is not our war, we shouldn't be involved, we do not want to start an international incident between the ponies, yaks, and dragons, because the dragons are our allies, the yaks are our allies. Right now, we are in between, we shouldn't get involved with this until we know the full facts. But no, Rainbow Dash just takes charge of everyone, and everyone kind of agrees to, well, attack the dragons. Except for Spitfire, this is mutiny, Miss Dash, I'll have you strung up from the highest yard arm. yeah. yeah. And oh wait, that's not a call. <laughs> uh, but talking about Miss Dash, uh, her portrayal here, oof, I I like it. She kind of plays the part of we must do something here. We must take charge. We must stop this. We are the Wonder Bolts. We should do something. But I do not like the fact that she undermines Spitfire wholeheartedly. Although it is interesting to see her parents depict her the parents' flashback of when Dash was afraid to fly in public. In public, that was that is unusual. Rainbow Dash afraid to fly. Rainbow Dash afraid of an audience. <clears throat> yes, and which makes sense because we all have our fears, and Rainbow Dash's here is I am afraid of flying in public. I I, I don't want to make a fool of myself. But somehow, Papa Dash here just says, no problem, you you need to do this, and do this you did. And do this. <laughs> <laughs> but still, uh, with that story there, it kind of motivates Spitfire to take to action and leave Rainbow Dash in charge. Like, what? <laughs> and like I mentioned before, with this, Rainbow Dash takes charge of the Wonder Balls. At least we know she can make a good captain. El Capitano, maybe one day she will be a captain of the Wonderbolts. Mm-hmm. One day, one day. But to that day is not today. 
<laughs> and so you die, Spitfire, and we all move up in rank. <laughs> oh, no. So, Silver, who are you going to talk next? We, we talk about Rutherford, we talk about Spitfire, we talk about Rainbow Dash. Who's on the list? Well, there's Pinkie Pie, who's surprisingly not a big participant in this story. True that. Like, I, I kind of forgot that she was involved. And, yeah, I, I don't know what to say, because most of the things we can say is her involvement in the... Uh, series I, I forgot the episode but still um didn't we review that one it was episode 12 right yeah basically pinky's been the most involved in the yaks through party pooped and not asking for trouble mm -hmm. the fact that she's rather passive in this story she looks at she's grateful to rutherford for looking out after her safety but and she does the party cannon which is always appreciated party cannon for best offensive weapon true true Right, I call it the inoffensive weapon. <laughs> Indeed. But I just think to myself, why why is she not being more proactive in helping her friends solve this problem? Probably she's not well suited for the situation because well, she's an earth pony with a party cannon. What can she do against dragons that much? Drive them batty. <laughs> you know she could. Yeah, yeah. Or she could be the one to offer a peace offering. I'm I'm confident Pinky has a way of getting folks on the same page. True, true, but it seems that it's not in this comic. And no, well, I'm sorry. no, it's not, yeah. which makes me sad. Uh, yep, I yep. am sad face. And yeah, well, let's let's add in the other main six here because um, beforehand, uh, Rainbow Dash tells Fleetfoot to head to Ponyville and get Princess Twilight and her gang, and that she did. And boy, she fast. I mean, Fleetfoot really booked it. Oh yeah, true that. Um, <laughs> probably a Sonic uh, Fleet Boom. Sonic Fleet Boom, why not? Yeah, but yeah, they they get there fast with Fluttershy also flying the um, balloon and whatnot. And yeah, now let's talk about Twilight now. And Twilight. Oh, and oh this do we one... have to? <laughs> do we have to? Oh uh, yeah, we do, man. We do. We, there's a few characters that need that to. Okay, let's not. Okay, let's go for the characters that are not that important to the story. Starlight, Rarity, Applejack, Fluttershy, a bit. They're kind of there just to be there, to fill in the quota. That's about it. They're the supporting cast to make sure no one dies. Oh yeah, true that. Uh, kind of important that people not die. You're, this is a kid's comic, as Pinky said in one. Oh, yeah, true. That, true that. And, yeah, that, that's about it. That, that, that is totally it for those characters. They're there just to fill up space and insert lines for Spike later. That's about it. And I think we have to talk about Twilight now, because if not, we ah. won't... If not, we will be missing the two other characters. So, for Twilight here... It's rather interesting because she's not thinking about why are the dragons doing this or she kind of did ask, but she's more kind of defending and not making everything stop like how she did with one of her powers during Castlevania. Well, I can accept the idea that she can't force the uh, the dragons to stop, that they're, they're just too big and too powerful uh, to be held. But at the same time, Twilight does ask point blank, what what offense did the Yaks give? And she doesn't get an answer. And apparently she's like, well, okay, then I hate you all. What? Yep, that, no, 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 not, not even that. Because that happens in the second issue, um, book 56. And the thing is, Twilight has been going through all the records of the Yaks history and trying to look for the, what you call this, um, what, what did she say? The sacred bond. Yeah, that's what she's been looking for. But there's no reference to it at all. And oy, the revelation of the secret bond was so... Uh, how do I want to... <laughs> uh, how should we count the ways? One, one thousand. Two, one thousand. No, okay, here, here's the thing. I, I think the line that the pony says is that, um, who, who said it? Like, I, I think it was Ember. Sorry, it was Spike. And he said this. What? You're telling me that all this happened because ancient yaks were lousy artists? Yep. That is the, the cause of all this. Rutherford didn't know 
the history because Yaks were terrible artists. Oh, God. Silver, please help. Oh. Well, here's the thing. I don't fault Twilight for focusing on defense on their initial charge into the foray. When you're under attack, when when there's danger and threat of of death, when lives are at stake, why is not the immediate question. What are you going to do is far more pressing. But it's after they get away, after the battlefield is done, after the ponies have the chance to sit down, regroup, and Twilight could use that marvelous mind of her to figure things out, or, heaven forbid, just go to Ember and talk and just say, why are you doing this? Well, they, they ask, so, well, we don't, so why are you doing this? And she doesn't. And that speaks volumes against her. And that was frustrates me because the thing is, it's not like Ember and Twilight are not friends. It's not that Rutherford and Twilight don't know each other. And here's my point where I mentioned earlier before that the pony shouldn't be involved in this. Like, they shouldn't be involved in the fight. They should be trying to avoid any fighting at all. They should be the referee in the middle trying to... The best way is the peacekeeper. They should be the peacekeeper trying to keep peace between the two. If all else fails, then they'll step up. But now, without any question, without anything, the ponies are siding with the yaks and willing to fight the dragons who are their newest ally in this. Newest and most powerful allies to add to that. So, to me, that's just insanity. And then there's the way they talk about the dragons. Now, we're going general in this, because while Twilight definitely commits the cardinal sin of talking to Spike as if dragons are just naturally awful, but then the ponies have often said, oh, we're ponies, we do this, this, and this, because that's our nature. And I say, no, it's not. We've seen how ponies act under, under different circumstances, including the alternate timelines in uh, the Cutie Remark. Mm-hmm. Ponies take for granted they're not naturally kind, generous, and caring. That is something they're taught and they nurture. We see them under stress. They will go to war. They will be more aggressive. One, the ponies have a false view of themselves at times. Uh, true. Well, this version at least. But Twilight is supposed to be you know, a leader who calls others to be better. And to see her slipping into this mentality is terribly disappointing. Well, probably it's the situation of impending war. And that probably is why it's affecting her better judgment or something like that. But I, I don't know. That's just an excuse. to <laughs> My excuse for how Twilight here is. But in all honesty, war shouldn't be on the minds. Like, they should be defending. They should be counteracting everything and making sure there's no fight goes between the allies. No party left behind. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And talking about the dragons, Spike here. Spike here is the only smart one. And oy, people underestimate Spike, but he sometimes see logic in things that they aren't. Yeah, it's funny how sometimes he is the voice of reason amongst the entire group. And other times he's the cause of all the trouble. It depends on the, what the script requires of him, it seems. But in this case, he's the only one talking sense. And the only one who tries to be a goodwill ambassador. True, he always been that too with the dragon because I think it puts more pressure on him than what people think because he is a dragon living with ponies. But when he goes to the dragon land, he seems to be marked as a pony loving dragon. So he's in between two worlds where nobody really appreciates him. That's especially disappointing for the ponies who have, they've said in the past, he's a respected member of our group. Well, this says different. Not a one of them says, oh gosh, Spike, I'm so sorry I said that. Yeah, and I I think the whole pony here just thinks of Spike as a pony, like one of them. Like, they don't even think of him as a dragon anymore, which is kind of uh, thoughtful, but no, I'm still a dragon at heart. Like, you shouldn't underestimate my nature, or you shouldn't underestimate me. Yes, respect, he is your friend, he shares a lot of your values, and that's... That just shows it's not unique to a race, but also accept that he is a dragon. That is a part of his identity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's nothing to be ashamed of. Oh, true. And yeah, poor Spike here. He seems to be the one who's 
advocating of all. Yeah, you got it. Advoc- advocating. I think he's he's the only one here advocating peace because he goes to the trouble to talk to Ember. Well, in this scenario, he gets skipped by the dragon, but still. Um, what was that dragon scout doing? Capturing innocent little pony slash yaks. What the hell? Who knows? They, not, no one in this is really acting with a, a measured sense of purpose. They, everyone's just sort of reactionary. True, but in this scenario here, you think about it, right? Spike is going to walk all the way to the Yax capital. Not that far, really. But suddenly, some dragon picks him up. And when said dragon drops him off at the campfire where Ember is, the whole dragons are surprised. Like, who? Who goes there? Like, what? You mean that dragon there didn't kidnap you on command? You know, the, this is the guy who was nearly your dragon lord. It, oh, boy. And Ember. Oh, Ember. Yeah, let's talk about Ember. Because as much as I like Ember here, oh, boy. I I like Ember in the show. Ember in this one is like, oh, it's so hard to be nice. And so we're just going to do exactly what they expect of us. Which sometimes we will do have that thought. And sometimes have that view. And it's not right. At the same time, Ember insisted that she was going to have, she was going to do things differently than the old dragon lords. And so this, this just takes her like 10 steps back. It's almost, it's almost a character I don't recognize. Well, if you look at the way that how this plays off with the series, right? This could have been right after Ember became dragon lord and things get hard and she took the easy way out. And the lesson here is that you should never take the easy way out. The easy way out is never the right answer. And then when the episode came where Amber visit Ponyville, it's her going to Spike saying, hey, Spike, I need your advice on something because the dragons don't like how I run things. What should I do? I mean, to me, that's how I look at it, but eh. I viewed it that she's just not good at showing emotions. This one, she's showing her anger quite nicely. Oh, true that. And uh, the fact of the matter is, the whole issue here is because of the sacred bond that the X did for the dragons. And <laughs> I, I just like how the line goes, uh, that's what I don't get. What did the X do? They broke the sacred bond, of course. And Spike here blinks like he doesn't understand anything. And Ember says, I keep forgetting how not a dragon you are. <laughs> and Spike says, uncalled for but we'll get back to that later and poor spike here like he's the punching bag for this group exactly i mean everyone everyone the ponies are ragging on dragons and acting like he's not a member of that which shows them especially twilight twilight i'm gonna borrow from josh scorcher who uh he recently did a review of owls well that ends well the big part that dragged that episode down was twilight's own obliviousness. She's supposed to be his primary caretaker. Josh says, almost his mother, I view her as an older sister to him. But either way, she should know him better than any. And the obliviousness she shows is just, it it boggles the mind. I'm boggled. So having Spike insulted by both the ponies, saying he's not much like a drag, well, everyone's saying he's basically just a pony. And the dragon says, hey, you're just a pony. And the pony says, oh, Spike, we don't look at you as a dragon. We look at you as a pony. And Spike here feels, oh, screw, what am I? <laughs> yeah, he, he is the best of both worlds. Mm-hmm. And I wish that they would acknowledge that. True, true. And talking about being the best of both worlds, before they start fighting, Spike stops them and tells Twilight off. And also tells... Ember off and also tells Rutherford off. And wow. None shall be spared. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, this reminds me of that one clip where that one guy slapped everyone. Remember that clip? <laughs> where a guy slaps everyone? Yep, it was at a party or something. It's, it's a YouTube thing. I, I don't remember. I need to look for it and show it to you if I can find it. But no. Spike here puts the smackdown on Ember, Twilight, Rutherford, and just tells them, you guys are fighting over nothing. And he's Gold Ember for if people are saying that 
you're mean. You shouldn't act mean. You should change that mindset. And Rutherford, you should know more about your history. And Twilight, you should blah, blah, blah. I mean... Uh, you should stop being a moron. Yes. That. And, yeah, with, with that, all's well that uh, ends well. <laughs> no, all is not well because everyone in this looks stupid. Going back to Rainbow's parents, where were they in this? They disappeared in the second half. Oh yeah, totally. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, I seen them, and they're mostly taking care of the yaks, or the younger yaks and the elder yaks with Fluttershy. And I'm just like, actually, is no, oh, no, I forget. Fluttershy does does uh nothing. <laughs> well, well, she does mention the the those awful or scary yaks. She's like, ah, oh, Fluttershy, yar, not you too, yar. Yeah, but still, like, Fluttershy here has a big fear of dragons, so I don't blame her, but still... I'm gonna blame everybody. Even Fluttershy? Even Fluttershy. Oh, even Fluttershy. Even Fluttershy, oh, what someone think of the children? Wait, that was last episode. But, anywho... Once Spike lays the smack down on all three of the leaders here, they seem to kind of get it and they're sorry and they promise that things will never, uh, things won't be the same. We'll change our ways. I don't believe you. <laughs> uh, but overall, this comic here is a woozy. Uh, it talks about the need to learn from history, even just even Rainbow's personal history mm. uh, had relevance. It oh, was yeah, helpful. Totally. But with the second mm -hmm. issue, uh, 56 well, here, it's not. It's frustrating. Yeah. And I I did not enjoy the second. The second half, the first half is mostly the, like I said, the immediate what is happening. We're under attack. Lives are threatened. Okay, to action. Mm -hmm. And that's forgivable at a point where Okay, I, I see the setup here. Uh, this is not good, but I can see the setup. But okay, let's see what happens in the second one. And when the second one pops up, I almost forgot that, hey, um, what happened to Amber? Why did she leave? Like, what? Oh, you're, you're telling this kind of story. Oh, you're going to tell a flashback. Okay. Yeah, not needed. Flashback. Flash forward. Mm -hmm. Flash sentry. Oh, not needed. Actually, that'd be kind of funny. Flash sentry is here. Turns out it's all Flash Sentry's fault. Sorry, my bad. Oh my. It's frustrating to see everyone brought low just so Spike can be the one to talk sense. It's the frustration of take, bringing the world down to make one character look good. It usually backfires. True, and honestly, I don't really think that Spike here needs that kind of handicap. In all honesty, Spike here can do well when given the proper script. And over here, like, okay, he's the one that's willing to do the talking. And yeah, I think he learned his lesson from Princess Twilight or Princess Spike. Um, so he's stepping up. And why don't you, if you still want to do Spike as the hero of the story, why don't you do that from the very beginning or something like that? Like, having him being involved in the second part of the story seems kind of shoehorned in. It is madness. Madness, I tells you. Yeah, and I uh, honestly, uh, this comic here is not one of my favorites. Like, I won't say that it's, um, how do I put this? For Ember's first appearance in the comic, it's a very not good appearance. Sigh. Mm -hmm. Although, on the plus side, we'll, she'll get another chance as next month is a comic where the leaders of all the equestrian races get together for a summit. Ooh, does this include the sea ponies? Yes, <gasps> on the cover Ooh. is Queen Novo. The movies are canon. Yes. That's right, which means the princesses got pwned in canon once again. Ah. <laughs> uh, what's new? But anyway. Ah. But anyway. That makes me sad. <laughs> uh, but anyway, to end this story, the dragons, the yaks, and the ponies work together to fix Yak Yakistan again. This place almost gets destroyed as much as Ponyville. <laughs> Not good. It's funny because it's true. <laughs> yes. Laugh, damn you. <laughs> uh, but anywho, with that, the comic ends. And so does our discussion. Like, 
I think we covered almost everything that we need to cover. The story is quite mediocre and confusing. Would you agree? Mediocre. Uh, but still, I think that's our whole thought on the matter, right? It had the makings of a good story. But again, it's bringing the world low to make one character look good. And that, that does not work. I'm not sure I've ever seen that work. Yeah, it's similar to what they did in the episode like Princess Spike. There's a lot of things that went wrong with that one. And uh, the more I think about it, I, the more they could have done it better. Say true. Mm-hmm. But anyway. Say true. But anyway. Anywho. Silver, what Anywho. are you going to do next week? Oh, well, if you thought this was rough, wait until we get back to the show. Because next up on the list is Fame and Misfortune. Oh, God. I forgot. <laughs> Fame and misfortune, fame and misfortune. Oh, So, wow. this episode is borderline notorious. Mm, yes, I remember now. Borderline schmorderline, it is. Mm, yes, yes. Nah, nah. Notorious, notorious. Nah, nah. Uh, yes, so that will be next week's review. And that will be a doozy to talk about. I, I I really can't wait to talk about it because it's one of those stories that have a lot of backstories, especially after that one interview with Larson at Brony Can. It does illuminate some stories behind the scenes. Well, you think that's something? I actually got to talk to Mitch Larson at uh, Nightmare Nights. Ooh, please illuminate um, some stuff on the story later on. I would like to hear Yes, we will. It will be a fun thing for discussion at the time. Indeed. But for now, but for now, we must simply accept that it's an episode that draws some stark opinions. Ah, yes, true that, true that. But T- Tony Stark opinions. Aha! Ah, uh, him. But anywho, uh, if you guys at home would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. And with every support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcast deleted contents and exclusives and also a huge thank you from me and talking about thank yous I would like to thank Lurker, Cat, and Dracatoria, Starstream, Myself, Lag and also Emi I have been Norman Sanzo I am Cecil Vaquil and we'll guys catch you next week with another fun and amazing episode of the MBS show see ya adios ah, the dragons did the dragons had only one job one job and it failed. Ugh. All is failure, all is despair, doom, destruction. That's the job they had to do. They didn't burn down the Kyrgyzstan. Ah!